In the previous video, we took a look at what exactly vacuum tubes are and the basic principle under which they operate, which is uh, thermionic emission. We also took a look at the most simple of vacuum tubes, the diode, and we actually played around with this little uh, 5642 diode. And even though it's rated for extremely high voltages on the order of kilovolts, we managed to get it to work with just 24 volts, which I thought was awesome. It showed that vacuum tubes are a lot more flexible than I had initially expected when I was a kid. And we can, we're starting to see that we can do a lot of really interesting things with vacuum tubes at low voltages. But a diode is just the beginning. There's tons of other types of vacuum tubes. And today I want to take a look at probably the most ubiquitous of vacuum tubes, and that is the triode. Just so happens that I have, I have one right here, and this is uh, 6DJ8. It's actually a dual triode, so there's two triodes inside of here. But what is a triode, and how does it differ from a diode? Well, let's hop back over to the bench and take a look in more detail. First things first, let's just go ahead and redraw our diode from last time. So if you remember, we have a heater element on the bottom, and then we have a cathode that sits just above that heater element, and the heater heats that up. And the heater element itself is attached to uh, 6.3 volts. And then way above the cathode here, we have a plate. And we attach the plate to a pretty high voltage, and then we can run our cathode down here to our low side, and then we cre can create our diode circuit that way. Now, if you remember, as the cathode gets heated up by the heater here, it starts to throw off little bitty electrons. And these electrons really want to get up to this plate up here because it has a positive charge. So they fly up that way with a really high speed to be attracted to that plate. And that's how we get the flow of current through our circuit. Now, this is a diode, right? And so diode has, spelled like this, D-I-O-D-E. And, and in the beginning of diode, we have D-I. And this is kind of telling us what's going on here. So D-I stands for two. So you can see that we have two elements inside of this. We have one, two. And Ode is just a really short way of saying electrode. So this is a dielectrode. So we have two electrodes inside of our vacuum tube. Now, when we say something like triode, well, we can kind of figure out what it means because tri means three. So that means that there must be a third element inside of our vacuum tube. And there is, and it's called the grid. And it sits right here in the middle, in between our cathode and our plate. And the grid's job is to either let these electrons pass or to block them from going past. And we do this by controlling what kind of charge we put on the grid. And so if we have a strongly negative charge on the grid, uh, you know, opposites uh, attract and like charged particles repel each other. So if this has kind of a negative charge to it, these electrons are gonna get up to here and they're gonna go, nope, no thank you, and they're gonna turn around and head back. And so they don't really have any place to go. And so we end up in a situation where there's no current flow through the tube. And then if we change this grid charge to a more positive charge, it starts to let more and more of these electrons through so that they can make their way up to the plate. Now what's really interesting about this is that it's purely analog. So if we have a highly negative charge, say, you know, something like minus 10 volts, no electrons can get through. But then if we bring that down to say something like minus 8 volts or minus 6 volts or minus 4 volts, as we get closer and closer to zero, it starts to let a few more electrons through, more and more and more and more. And then when we get to zero, 
and then even up into the positive voltage range, it starts letting all of the electrons through. And then we've got a full circuit, so we get the full power through the circuit. And so in this way, we can control the output by controlling the amount of charge on the input. Now, you've noticed that I've written really small voltages here, minus 10 volt, minus 8 volt, minus 6 volt. Uh, and when I play with it, you'll see that we go up to plus 6 volts pretty much at the most. But this B plus can be really high voltages. And if we look at the data sheets for triodes, you'll see that this B plus voltage can be you know, anywhere from 100 volts to 300 volts regularly. And, and there's a lot of triodes and uh, different vacuum tubes out there that can go much higher than this, 500, 600 volts and whatnot. And so we have a really small input voltage here controlling a really large output voltage. So what this means is that we can have a really small signal coming into the grid and it gets amplified by the high voltage on the plate into a really big signal. So we can have something very small controlling a very large voltage. And this is, this is an awesome property. And this fundamental concept of how these vacuum tubes work is what all of those wonderful, amazing vacuum tube amplifiers work on. They use this theory of amplifying a small signal in and creating a big signal out. And it creates it really faithfully, and it creates it in an analog fashion. And that's why they tend to sound so good. Now you know me, I like to put it on a breadboard and experiment with it. See what the actual practical results are going to be of experimenting with these vacuum tubes. So on my breadboard I have three different circuits. I'm using one vacuum tube, but this vacuum tube is the 60J8 and it has two triodes inside of it. So we'll be playing with two different triodes. So I'll just go ahead and draw those two triodes on my paper here. So both of these triodes are set up as inverting amplifiers. And what that means is that we have a load resistor coming into the plate from our high voltage which is going to be 24 volts in our case. And this is the same for both triodes that we're doing. And the load resistor is going to be a little 10,000 ohm resistor. And then our output is coming off in between the load resistor and the plate. And for this output, so we can see what the result is, see whatever it is that we're changing down here, we're going to have an LED. But so we don't burn that LED out. We go through another resistor and then we have our LED there. And then that goes uh, to ground. Sorry, I drew that sideways, but. And then this goes through an LED here and that goes to ground. And these little LEDs So this way, whenever we change the voltage that is on the grid, we'll notice a change in the LED here. Now, so far, these are both set up identically. And because they're inverting amplifiers, we're going to connect the cathode down here directly to ground as well. So where the big difference is coming is what we're putting into the grid here. On one of them, we will go through a 10,000 ohm resistor into a little push switch. And then this little push switch is hooked up to uh, 6 volts. And this little resistor is about a 10,000 ohm resistor. So this way, whenever we push the push switch, we'll be sending 6 volts through a 10,000 ohm resistor into the grid. Now, whenever we're not pushing the push switch, we want to make sure that the grid is pulled low. So what we're going to do is that we have coming off of the grid another resistor that goes to ground. And this resistor is quite big, actually. It's a 100,000 ohm resistor. Uh, 
So when I push the switch, we get a signal that, that starts low and then comes up high to plus six volts. And then when I release the switch, the signal goes back down to zero. And when the signal's at zero, our 100,000 ohm resistor here makes sure that our grid is pulled to ground. And when we push this switch and we have a six volts coming into the grid, that means that our little electrons can flow to the plate, which means that we have current flowing through the, the triode in this direction. When that happens, the voltage potential coming through our LED is going to drop significantly. So we should see the brightness of our LED drop. And then when I release the switch, we should see the brightness return because those electrons can't pass through. And so all of that voltage coming through here is going to make that turn and go through our LED over here. So with an input like this, we should see an output something like that, the inverse of what our input is, hence why this is called an inverting amplifier. Now, what are we doing on this side here? Well, just like the other side, we have a 100,000 ohm resistor pulling the grid low whenever we're not pushing anything. But we have this come down to a potentiometer. And that potentiometer is connected to six volts on one end and ground on the other. And then as we change the position of this potentiometer, we're changing the voltage that is going into the grid. So we should see something that looks like this coming out of our input. We have a smooth ramp up to six volts and a smooth ramp back down to zero volts, which means that on our output, we should see the, uh, the opposite of that, right? So these are our two primary setups with our vacuum tube. But if you remember, I said that we have three circuits on the breadboard and the third circuit is actually with an NPN transistor. Now it is set up identically to how our inverting amplifier triodes are set up. So again, we have a little 10,000 ohm resistor. This comes into our transistor. Coming out of the transistor, we go straight to ground. And then on our input, we have a 10,000 ohm resistor here. Now, where are we gonna hook this input up here? Well, it turns out that on my breadboard, I've got it hooked up into our little potentiometer here. So we should be able to see a very interesting difference between how the transistor behaves as an inverting amplifier. And remember our output comes off here. And again, we go through a 10,000 ohm resistor and an LED to ground. Just like up here. And we should be able to see a really interesting difference between how the triode reacts to this changing voltage of our potentiometer and how the transistor reacts to this changing voltage of the potentiometer. Now, as I said, the triode that we're going to be using is a 6DJ8 dual triode. This is a pretty generic dual triode. And the transistor that I'm going to be using is a 2N2222. So this is also a very generic uh, MPN transistor. So these are the three circuits that are going to be on our breadboard. So let's go ahead and pull our breadboard out and play around with it and see what happens. So we'll go ahead and just slide these out of the way and we'll bring our breadboard in here. Now you can see the dual triode is this single vacuum tube over here and these the vacuum tube itself is split in essentially half. So pins four and five are for the heater and the heater shared with both triodes and pin nine goes to ground. And pin one, two, and three are going to be the plate grid and cathode of one triode. And then six, seven, and eight are the plate grid and cathode of another triode. And so that's what we have set up here. And this 
potentiometer here is inputting into the triode on the left, and our little button over here is inputting into the triode on the right. And then you can see that we have our little 2 in 2 2 2 uh, transistor setup over here and again that potentiometer comes down and inputs into both of them. So I'll go ahead and plug in our power supply here. We'll turn the power supply on. It is set to 24 volts just like before. Now you'll notice that uh, both of these LEDs came on and that's because the vacuum tube itself is not warm yet and when it's it takes a while for the heater to warm up. Oh hey look at that this LED turned off so that that's good that means that that we have something going on with our potentiometer here. So uh, that's actually off, that's keeping that off. And so what that must mean then is that we have a positive voltage coming through the potentiometer and to the input of both of these. Uh, but we'll take a look at that in a little more detail in a minute. What I really wanna focus on right now is the button on the other side. And so you'll notice that our LED is on. And you'll also notice that I have these voltage drop uh, resistors in parallel to the LED. And, uh, we'll talk about why I did that uh, here in a minute after we experiment with the actual uh, vacuum tube. So if I press that button, we should see that LED turn off because that was, you know, when I push that button, we put a positive voltage into the grid and that should pull our output low. So let's, let's try that. Let's see what happens here. Awesome. The LED turned off. That is amazing. So we have it actually functioning on and off like that. That's very cool. All right, so you can see in this way, I'm using just as a six volt input to control our output here. And that's what I'm showing with the LED by pushing this button. All right, so that's, that's really cool. We know now that we can use the triode as a voltage controlled switch. But what about this potentiometer? Well, to keep our focus on just the triode for now, I'm gonna remove the LED here. And as I turn this potentiometer, I'm starting to decrease the amount of voltage going into the grid. And you can see right there, we already have the LED lit up, but it's really, really, really dim. All right, so this, this means that we're starting to cut down the number of electrons that are flowing through. And if I rotate it more, the LED gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until we hit maximum brightness. And when we hit maximum brightness, what this means is that uh, we have the grid pulled to ground. And so all of those electrons that are trying to flow through the triode can't. And that means that our output is going to be pulled high because current can't flow through the triode. So that's really cool. We saw a very linear change in the brightness of the LED with the rotation of the potentiometer. That's very cool. We're controlling the LED's brightness. That's awesome. All right, so what about this transistor? I mean, it's set up pretty much exactly the same. So we should see a pretty similar result, right? All right, so here we go. Let's, let's go ahead and rotate the potentiometer. All right, well, you can see that the, the triode LED is starting to illuminate, but the, uh, the transistor LED isn't on yet. It hasn't actually illuminated at all. And triode LED is getting brighter and brighter and brighter. But this LED is actually still off. If I go a little bit brighter, whoa, look at that. The LED came on to full brightness with just not even a sixteenth of a turn. If I go back, it turns right off again. And so what's happening here is we're seeing a very clear difference between digital and analog. So you can see that analog gives us a pretty accurate representation of the input voltage on the output. Whereas with digital, with our little silicone transistor here, we're seeing it operate more like a light switch. You can see that that LED comes on and off really quickly. Now, if I'm very careful with my fingers, I can kind of get a half brightness out of that LED, but it's really unstable and the LED tends to flicker. And the transistor doesn't like being in that half on, half off state it seems to really want to go into full saturation or completely off. And so this is, this is very interesting. This is, this is one of the primary differences between digital electronics and analog electronics, and that's awesome. And so we can now see that we have something that we can use this triode for. for we, can, we can create all sorts of really neat analog circuits with it. 
But remember I mentioned these little 10,000 ohm resistors. Now if I go through and I remove these from all of the LEDs here, that LED right back in place there, and then we'll remove this one. Well, you'll notice that something has changed right off the bat. The LED from our triode that's being controlled by the potentiometer is illuminated now. Now, if I move the potentiometer, you'll notice it does get brighter and it does get dimmer, but it doesn't actually ever go off. And if I push the button for the other triode, you'll notice it gets dimmer as well, but it doesn't actually go off. Hmm, that's kind of weird. If we look at the transistor, we notice that the LED is completely off and we turn it that way, the LED is completely on. And actually, now that we look at it a little closer, we can see that the transistor LED is actually a little brighter than both of the triode LEDs when they're supposed to be at full brightness. So what, what exactly is going on here? And well, that requires us to kind of dive a lot deeper into how the triode operates and take a look at what exactly is happening with the grid and what kind of voltages the grid is expecting. And so I think uh, next time we'll dig into the, to the data sheet in a little more detail and we'll take a little closer look at that. But for now, uh, I'm pretty happy that we were able to create such a unique circuit here. And uh, we were able to see such a clear definition between uh, analog and digital electronics. Uh, so stick around. Next time we'll go into greater detail about uh, what, what exactly is going on with this triode here.